This is Coal. For nearly 50 years, coal has been used in our country to generate the lion's share of electricity for our homes, businesses, and industry. This electricity has provided us with power for lighting, heating, cooling, cooking, washing, communicating, entertaining. Well, you get the idea. Simply stated, electricity is essential in providing for the many needs and amenities we enjoy in America. Here at this power plant, every few days a string of coal cars arrives packed with coal from out of state. When the coal arrives, it drops through the bottom of each car into this unloading station. From here it travels by conveyor belt, where it is piled and sized for processing. The coal is then moved to a mill station, where it is ground into a fine powder and used as fuel to fire a huge furnace chamber, heating it to over a thousand degrees. Here in the chamber, water courses through a grid of boiler piping and is superheated to create an intense steam. The steam is then piped into a large turbine engine where the pressure from the steam rotates the mechanical turbine, turning the electrical generator. As the generator spins, molecules move and charge, creating electricity. That electricity is then transferred to the switchyard just outside the plant where it's distributed to a number of substations throughout the region, and then on the homes and businesses, supplying them with power. When you think about it, the process for generating electrical power has many similarities to the process we must all follow as Christians for having spiritual power. When we receive Christ at the moment of salvation, we become a new creation. The Holy Spirit indwells our being and resides in us. And at that moment, we're given a great resource. But like any resource, if it's going to be helpful, it's got to be processed and put to use. Take this lump of coal. It's of little value if I just stand here and hold it. But if you process it and put it to use, it can be a great tool as we've seen. It's the same for us as believers. If we have the Holy Spirit inside us and we never tap into His power, we miss a great opportunity to do more and reach the full potential God offers us beyond our own gifts and talents. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. These final words of our Savior describe a powerful experience that we as Pentecostals hold dear. It's described in many ways in the Bible, but Jesus and others called it the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He also called it the promise of the Father. One of the things we need to realize is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for every Christian. In the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says that they were all filled with the Spirit. Peter told the crowd on that day that that promise was for you, for your children, and for all who are far off, even as many as the Lord Himself shall call. Friend, Peter was talking about us, all of us who are in Christ Jesus. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is a separate experience that follows salvation. It is not a requirement for salvation, but it is a benefit that every member of the body of Christ can enjoy. So the Holy Spirit baptism is not a requirement of salvation for the non-Christian, but it is an empowering experience for the Christian so that they can be supernaturally equipped. The book of Acts demonstrates a very clear-cut pattern. The Holy Spirit baptism occurs only after someone has truly accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Now the Holy Spirit is present during this process, for He is the convicting agent that draws someone to Jesus and baptizes Him into Christ. But there is another experience that is different than and subsequent to salvation, and that's where the power of the Holy Spirit is so very real. With that experience comes intimacy, where we want to live a righteous, holy life, 
also there comes a power to witness. One of the things I've learned in being here at this plant, that creating power is really a noisy business. The fire stokes, the pressure bills, the turbine whines, the generator rumbles. Believe me, it's noisy, but it's all part of the process. Isn't that just like the spirit? The historical record of the book of Acts shows that the baptism is always accompanied by speaking in other tongues as the spirit gives utterance. On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the spirit and spoke in other tongues or languages as the spirit enabled them. This recurring sign of Acts is the initial physical evidence of the Holy Spirit and a sign that one has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. To me personally, I view the baptism much like this furnace chamber here at the plant, or for that matter, like a steam kettle on a stove. When the water gets hot and begins to boil, there's no containing it. It's going to be released, and with it will come a sound. So it is with our spirit. When we approach God in brokenness, with a heart full of love for God, and our mouths filled with thankfulness for His wonderful gift of salvation, there come a point when we're full and our spirit cannot be contained. Now, out of this baptism process, we're empowered beyond our own capabilities. We're virtually immersed in the Spirit of God in His presence. Human timidness is gone, and we're filled with confidence to share the gospel. There's this desire to live a holy life, to be more Christ-like, to live beyond our capabilities. There's a desire to read the Word. There's a desire to be a greater disciple. And there's this desire to help others. The day we accepted Christ, we were given a great opportunity, the power of His Spirit, unleashed through baptism in our lives, with power to live, to serve, and to win others for all eternity. Friends, let's not squander it. I don't know about you, but my prayer is, Lord, send the wind.